nice, got my 70 MAI dash cam. Can't wait to put this thing in the car. I got my Porsche Macan Turbo behind me, but today is really not about the car. It is about the dash cam. I think that it has a really good look. This thing is gonna stick right on the front of the windshield right here. We'll go ahead and pop it open. I also have the hardwire install kit. So I wanna have this thing permanently dedicated in the car. I have not had one in the Macan. Uh, I really haven't had a dash cam in anything since probably 2015, and I really should. So on Ultimate Activities are happening all the time around us. As we all know, we see those cars and we know probably not rocking insurance and they're driving absolutely insane. If you witness something with the camera, you can obviously use that as police evidence, give that over to the authorities and let them know that yeah, that was a hit and run. And yes, I do have that hit and run on camera, which really helps out. Here's a quick one, we're at a stoplight. We're just chilling. There's one car ahead of us. This car decides that's a pretty nice Porsche behind me. Bet he has insurance. Slams it in reverse, boom! Slams right into the front of my car. Now what does that look like if that person calls the authorities and says, he rear-ended me? Well, it does look like you were kind of rear-ended, doesn't it? Um, however, you could kind of check the angles of the car, right, that sort of thing, but really, how much are the police gonna get into that and who are they gonna believe in this scenario? Well, if you got a dash cam, boom. You're screwed, a lot of insurance fraud happens, and a lot of people don't have insurance and they're trying to get money off of you. Dash cam it is. I live in Sacramento and uh, I can tell you, I need one badly, very, very badly. Went ahead with this one. Uh, these guys actually sent this one out to me and I'm like, yes, I do need one. This is 1944P Ultra HD video and we will show the video out. I have a 170 degree ultra wide angle, built in EMMC. I also saw something about tire pressure monitoring, which is kind of cool and I'm gonna have to check that out. I'm assuming there's an app on this thing, but let's go ahead and pop it open. Gonna get the first impressions. Unboxing wise, it's a nice looking box. Oh, very nice actually. So, right here, whoa! That was the book. I had it tilted, it shouldn't pop out on you. Install book right there. The actual camera, which is sleek and slim. That is what I was looking for, look at that thing. That is teeny. Here's my hand, right, in my hand. It is looking pretty small. Has a little cover protector on there. We have what looks to be a couple cables. And over here, I'm assuming this is gonna be the mount. It's got that like nice soft, Soft touch plastic, if you will. Looks like we have some adhesive tape right here. We have the mount right here. Uh, you can see that that does have a little bit of angle on it. And we have the camera itself. We're gonna go ahead and slide that in like so. You can see the USB is accessible like that, which is really cool. And we have an HD camera on the car so we'll be able to kind of affix it to the windshield like this with the double-sided tape and it's a very slim profile it did come with an extra piece of double sticky tape so you know in case you screw up or need to reaffix it good to go there the regular box comes with a fairly long looking USB-C this little piece of electrostatic film I guess we're gonna go ahead and put this on the windshield the normal kit came with the USB cord and it came with the USB-C with a plug right here. It says 70 MAI, plugs in right on the top, and then you have a normal USB on the bottom there. I'll go ahead and open up the hardwire install kit because I want to see what's in this. Okay, so a little bit longer, or maybe it's the same size cord actually here, but you can see what we got is a USB-C on this side. We have the cord itself. We have like a little uh, transformer or like power inverter type situation going on here. And then we have a couple spots where we would hook us up. We have a negative, which is the ground. We have a positive, which is a positive. And we have an accessory, which accessory is gonna be like an on key, right? Basically like how your stereo turns on. The accessory mode uh, would make it to where it knows that it's on. So I'm sure it can kind of go into a bypass and an on mode. We'll go ahead and try to install it with this so Porsche, so it may be a little bit difficult. I'm gonna try to figure that out and we'll show you what I do. So the first thing I wanna do here is kind of figure out where I want to put the dash cam itself. Now, I'm thinking like, kind of like this. And if I'm looking in the car and I'm sitting in my normal uh, seating position, I can't even see this thing. So, you know, that's gonna be pretty good. You can see it kind of has this area right around this with Literally a perfect outline of what this thing looks like. So I'm actually just going to cut that out. Now that looks something like that. And just try to get whatever 
bubbles are out of that. Now I'm just peeling off the double stick right there. I'm gonna stick this thing on the car in that area. That's good. I literally, from this, from my driver's seat, I cannot see this camera. Like if I'm looking at the mirror, I don't even see that. If I get low, like right here, yes, I can see it. But I have perfect vision out this way, which is great. I'm gonna use this one. We have the USB-C, which is gonna plug in right here on the side. It'll be like this, but I'm gonna tuck all of this up and around in this crack area here. And then I'll go up kind of in here to the headliner area up here. And I'm gonna use that tool. Then I'm gonna go right here little split right in the Alcantara uh, for the airbag area and the A pillar. I'll tuck the wire right in here. You can see we can get a little bit of a gappage. We'll come right around here to this outer area and we'll tuck it right in the weather stripping. Now when we go all the way to there we're gonna notice that there's this little piece right here. In the bottom you can see where the pry tool will work. Use this pry tool kind of pry up, pry up, pry up and your fuse box may be located in a different location, depending on your car, right? We're over to the fuses. Now, on Porsche, man, they make these things pretty dang nice. They really don't want you to even get to them. So, uh, you actually have to pry off this little top cover piece, which... I didn't have to have all of this wire before this little box here. I would probably tap it into that upper area up there. But I think we're just going to run it into the fuse box over here. Because I have that excess length of wire, I can't really trim it down uh, because of that. With the USB-C, I'm literally just gonna tuck it here. We could try to kind of get it back over here, but I have a feeling that that might vibrate a little bit. So I'm just gonna go right from here to here. And using the tool, I can just use that to kind of just press it in to literally the plastic area right here. And just make that to where it feels like a nice firm spot that's not gonna pop out. You can kind of see as it's going, it's kind of getting a little bit of a pop out. Minor area, using that tool, making sure I got a hefty amount kind of tucked up there and it's not gonna, it's not gonna pop out on me. That's the main thing. I don't want to see this when I'm driving. So we can just kind of pop that all up there. I'm using the pry tool. I'm literally just pushing it in that area right there. And all of a sudden, it just disappears. I literally have it right up in here. And you are not seeing that at all. So we'll take it all the way around this side. And I can very easily just tuck this in the molding, using that tool makes it even easier. Now we're pretty much to right here. We wanna tuck this in so it doesn't get jammed up in the door. Literally that crack, I'm gonna push it into. This is where we have a little bit of issues right here. So make sure I don't break this basically. I need to try that and get that. Literally there's a little hole right here. Like I was saying, that's the one piece I don't love. The install kit, if it was if that was not there, it would be a little easier. It's like nothing ever happened, right? We are right down there in the fuse box. It's a small gap underneath where I can tuck the new wires. Went ahead and grabbed some of these little fuse taps. So that's what I'm gonna use to tap into the fuses. But basically this just goes into the fuse area. And then in these two little spots right here, you put the original fuse and the new fuse, and that new fuse will feed out to this little guy, which is gonna connect to one of our wires. So the constant power, and then we'll have the auxiliary power. All right, so I went ahead and tapped into the fuses right here. I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on. So I found an accessory and a, which is an on key. And then I, I, tra I hooked into the alarm slash vehicle tracking system for the constant. And then for the other one, I tapped into the home link fuse. So we're good on that. It told me to connect the dash cam to the phone app. So yeah, let's go to the app store and go ahead and download that application. All right, so it looks like here is the North America 70 MAI software. So I'm gonna go ahead and download that. Alright, 
guys, so I went ahead and set the dash cam all up. So I wanna go drive around and get a little bit of a idea of how the picture quality looks basically. It looks like it has the app that allows me to even hook up tire pressure monitoring if I wanted that. Uh, the car already has that built in, so I'm not truly worried about that because I'll have that kind of pop up on my screen here. Uh, but it is kind of cool. It's really unnoticeable when you're sitting in the driver's seat right here. Uh, you don't really see it. I'm at about this height right here. And yeah, it just does not come into play into my field of view. So you can see right here, this thing is on. So what's pretty cool is this thing has voice commands. So literally, take a photo, shoot a video, Start recording emergency video. Enable sound recording. Audio recording is on. Disable sound recording. Audio recording is off. Open hotspot. Wi-Fi hotspot is on. Close hotspot. Turning off Wi-Fi hotspot. Enable sound recording. Audio recording is on. It has that voice activation if something, you know, goes on. Take a photo. I think that's super cool. Now we can go ahead and go on to the device and uh, take it off of our phone and that sort of thing. So that is very, very cool and it'll record incidents and whatnot and it should just kind of be on standby. So I'm gonna go ahead and drive around and then we'll throw in some of these video clips so you guys can get an idea of how the video quality looks. But overall, I really like the install. It's clean, you don't notice it at all. It was all right down there, very, very seamless. You don't see it up there, you don't see it up here. You only see the wire just kind of right here and plugged into the side. So yes, I could have maybe tucked that up in this area, but it really doesn't bother me. Probably one thing I would mention with this that I could see could be done a little bit better, just a right angle on this uh, little thing, maybe even like a little guide wire to go into, I don't know. Possibly even in the top, I wouldn't mind, but I do understand how the flexibility could come into play there. It does look like it has a QR code. I'm actually assuming that I could have scanned that QR code on the back and gotten to the app and uh, all the information. So yeah, 64 gigabytes of internal memory in this thing. There is no memory card. So that's kind of nice. It, it That's hit and miss, you know? Uh, it's nice because uh, you don't have to worry about memory cards but you do have to have the app on your phone uh, to retrieve the data. So you can't just like pop it out and uh, and get it. So it is a little bit extra there. I'm gonna go ahead and drive around a little bit. I did notice the HDR on the display. Uh, one of the modes that it has basically, uh, I turned that off. It was a little bit too much, if you will, as far as the contrast goes and the saturation. So I feel like the HDR off mode looks a little bit more natural and it's gonna pick up a little bit more. So let me go over to this video footage right here. Hopefully you guys are seeing it in a second here, but uh, yeah, we'll try a couple things. I also put on like a parking mode, which is kind of cool and, uh, and all of that, but. I think I accidentally disabled the audio by talking to the thing and telling it to turn the audio off in this spot. But as you can see, I'm just kind of going to cut over real quick here, get that motorcycle out of the way, obviously, check my mirrors and dodge over. I'm trying to see if this thing will kind of activate with some quick movements. So right now, I'll just kind of take this freeway off ramp fairly quickly, um, kind of just roll into this corner here. Uh, we're in a SUV, so, you know, 42, 43 miles an hour, fairly quick. Um, and just kind of merge onto the freeway. But you can see the video quality on this looks really, really good. Um, I was checking out kind of the mile per hour thing, like how fast are we getting up to uh, with that GPS right there. You could see the mile per hour and it actually shows the coordinates on here as well, which is pretty interesting um, to say the least. So, you know, you could use this in any traffic incident that may occur in the future. Hopefully that doesn't happen to you, but you know, if it does, that is what these dash cams are for. So yeah, I really like it. I think the quality is very good overall. Right now I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So this is like the full frame here, but when you zoom in, the quality still stays very, very high. So I'm actually really impressed with that. Um, yeah, overall, I dig it. I like the camera. I think it's sleek. I think it's small. The install is nice. The install is straightforward. And I do like the little install cable. I do think it would be nice 
if maybe the transformer was, I don't know, within the first three feet or so, and I could tuck that up in the headliner. That way, if I wanted to make the cable shorter, I could, and actually just tie that into the home link. But honestly, for 99% of people, I said 99, it's probably not 99, but it's, let's say 95% of people, they're gonna run it just right to their fuse box, and most likely that is going to be in the front of the vehicle, or you could do that under the hood and poke it through underneath the dash, so. Yeah, overall, I think this thing is looking pretty good. I know I get behind a truck up here, so I kind of want to show the approach with the camera. Obviously, if we're looking at cameras, that's why I'm talking right now uh, to make it a little more interesting. But I come up on this truck right here. I kind of wanted to get a view of how that looked, uh, just kind of tailing semi-close. And then I know in a second here, I'm just kind of going to blow by them. I kind of wanted to see what the side angles look like and uh, also just kind of, you know, test out a little bit of acceleration here. What's interesting is the speed. I know, I think it's about three miles an hour slow of what I'm pretty sure would maybe pop up on there, but hey, that's okay. You know, if it has a lower speed, that's good. If I need to show it to the police. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching guys. I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. We'll talk to you soon, later and wrench on.